Next up, the special forms is the difference of squares, and then we will wrap it up with uh, sums and differences of cubes. So we're going to have this whenever we have, what is that, um, terms of polynomials comprised by only two terms. So when you have two terms, what you want, it, the pattern you want to see is whether you have two quantities, the difference between two quantities squared, or the difference between two cubed quantities or the sum of two uh, of two cubed quantities. Well, let's look at the difference of squares first. So, when we, fact, when we have a difference of squares, that is, quantity that is a perfect square minus another quantity that is a perfect square, we write this just as a product between two conjugate binomials, a minus b times a plus b. Let's have a look at how we go about these um, differences of squares. Well, uh, I mean, if you've seen this before, uh, I think you can go straight to the final answer in one shot. And after a while, I mean, um, I can warrant you that these are going to become just a second nature and just go, oh, difference of squares, boom, boom, and boom, boom, right? Plus, minus, a, a minus b, and a plus b. However, if if you prefer, check this out, I would write this as quantity squared minus quantity squared. That is, to find the quantity whose squared is x squared. What is that quantity? And what quantity squared equals to 9? 3. Three. All right? So do you see the pattern? a squared minus b squared. Just go a and b. This is going to be our a. And this is going to be our b. And simply go like x and 3, x and 3. And just put minus and then plus. Or you can go the plus, the plus first, and then the minus. Again, it's a product between two quantities, and the order doesn't matter for the product. Right? Final answer. Let's have a look at the next one, 16y squared minus 25. All right, let's see. Let's see about it. Number one, uh, how about we find the quantities whose squares are those two quantities? That is, what quantity squared equals to 16y squared, and what quantity squared equals to 25 in this case? Okay, let's look at the first one. What quantity squared equals 16y squared? Just 4? 4 8? 4y, right? 4y. Make this look like a 4. And then what quantity squared equals to 25? Okay, so you got the A, you got the B. That's about it. That's all it is. That's just going to go 4Y and 5. 4Y and then and another 5. This time I'm going to do the minus and then the plus as opposed to the plus first and then the minus. This way, when you go back and see the notes or watch this video, um, you, still, you, you can still see that it doesn't matter which one you write. Do you write first the positive or the negative? All right? Oh, what about, what about letter, letter C? Hmm. Can we go about um, what number squared equals 50? And what quantity squared equals 8x squared? Is it possible? It's impossible, so would you factor out two? Exactly. What's the first thing we do every time we have a polynomial, regardless of whether it is a two term, three term, four term, 50, 100 terms, the first thing we do is. What? Factor. What, what's the name of the. What, what do we factor? GCF. GCF, right? The greatest common factor. All right. Now, so here is the thing. Okay, let's go about the greatest common factor. So, and it seems like they're both divisible by 2, right? So, 2 times the quantity, 25 minus 4x squared. Oh, look at these quantities inside of the parentheses. That 25 and that 4x squared. Do they look like perfect squares now? As opposed to 50 and 8? 
Don't get me wrong, the num for the number eight later, we're gonna look for it, we're gonna look at this number as a perfect cube, but not as a perfect square. Right now we're doing perfect squares, All right? <clears throat> Okay, so that's going to be two times. Keep writing these two. Don't forget about these two. So here's a, uh, something we like to stress on. So very oftentimes we're working on our mind math lab homework, and yes, we do this factoring, but initially that required to get a GCF out of first. However, when we're doing the work, the remaining part of the work, that's 5 minus 2x, 5 plus 2x, but oftentimes we forget about writing that to we we factored out as a GCF. So then we include an answer and input the answer. We get it wrong. We keep getting wrong. That's because these factors right here are very easy to forget to write it down. All right? Yes. Oh, would you would you put the uh, bracket around the the second two parentheses to make it so? Oh. Okay, I see what you mean. That that intermediate step, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back to that. Okay. So, do you mean this, like this being two times bracket, and then exactly quantity squared minus quantity squared, right? Yep. Why not? And then figure out the quantities. That is a five, and that is a two x. All right. And then just go with, uh, I mean, in this case, we no longer need to write the brackets because we already get the product of the two binomials, all right? So that's fine. All right, what about letter D? Letter D, to, oh, yes, question? Is it fine if I were to pull out negative 2 if I wanted the x to be on the left side? E, yeah, oh, I mean, writing with the, the, the 2 and then the 5? It's possible, that's fine. However, I mean, it's good. You will have to factor out a negative to begin with. And then, I mean, it's, it still works. Just don't forget about that negative. Uh, let me do it at the top. How about we do it at the top, just so, just so you can, so, so everyone can see what we're talking about. All right, so what do we have? 50 minus 8x squared. Okay, I'm going to factor out a 2, first of all. Again, that's going to leave us with 25 minus 4x squared. How about we factor out the negative sign so our first term inside of the parentheses is the variable term, which is not, which there's nothing wrong with living in like this. It's still fine. But again, for the most part, we are used to have the variable first and then the constant, right? So I'm going to take out the negative, give it a 2. And that's a 4x minus 20, 4x squared minus 25. And then we can do the negative 2, bracket, parentheses, squared, minus parentheses, squared. Okay, that's a 2x, and that's a 5. Negative 2, 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. Or 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5, either way. So all you would have to do as the extra mile is to factor out the negative, which is which is fine. Or I mean, living it this way, it's not it's it's not wrong. All right. All right. What about letter letter D? Okay, letter D p to the fourth power minus sixteen. Huh. Hold on, that doesn't look like a, like a difference of squares. That the first term is not a square. Well, technically it is. Uh, and, and it could be it could be weird at, at, at first because that's a power four actually, and not a power two. But a power two, a power four is really a power two in these guys, all right? Uh, I mean, if if this looks weird, still go with the, with the same pattern. Uh, how about write it like um, quantity squared minus quantity squared? Now the question here is. What quantity squared equals p to the fourth power? P squared. P squared, right? That's because p squared squared, what do we do with the exponent when we have power of another power? What do we do with them? Multiply, Multiply them, right? And 2 times 2, that equals to 4. Now, that's 16. What quantity squared equals 16? 4, right? Okay. 
How about we write the difference of squares for this one? That is, um, I'm going to do the, the minus first, okay? So p squared minus 4 times p squared plus 4, all right? And we're done with, different, with, with factoring the differences, the difference of squares right here. Uh, are we really done anyway? Why not, Anna, why not? Um, because you can, uh, two to the fourth power, but two to the fourth power is 16, so you simplify it further. Uh, which one? Well, so from, I mean from here, so that's my initial answer, right? But can we call it a day here, or? I mean, I agree with the four square 16. Yeah, that's where, where it came from. Sana? Uh, p squared minus 4 can be simplified. Can be further simplified because isn't that something squared minus another something squared? So let's keep going. So this guy right here, well, it has a special name. I'll, I'll write it down in a second. Uh, yeah, that's a p plus 2. p minus 2. And then times p squared plus 4. All right. So in this case, this has a special name. Let me call it, repeat it. A difference of squares. All right, and now note sum of squares cannot be factored. Sum of squares cannot be factored. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, well, that's one of those cases in which the sum of squares is prime. As opposed to the sum of cubes, we will be able to factor it out. All right. Let's keep going actually and factor sums and differences of perfect cubes, all right? And that's the last, that's, uh, that's what we're gonna call it for, for, the, for this review packet, by the way. Uh, let's see, so we have a couple of formulas here, a cubed minus b cubed equals all this madness here, and a, a cubed plus b cubed equals all that madness there. Well. Let's look at the right-hand sides of these two formulas right here. Notice we have AB and AB both in the same position, agree? Mm -hmm. We also have this A squared and A squared, AB and AB, and B squared and B squared. So what's the difference between those two formulas? Hmm? The signs. All right, so, so because we need to memorize these formulas, I'm going to show you uh, a mnemonic to, uh, to memorize these formulas because, well, and you may have seen it before, by the way. If not, well, this will be the first time you see it then. So maybe you, you've seen the SOAP mnemonic. Have you seen it before? If not, well, what is that S-O-A-P? Okay, check this out. This stands for same, opposite, always, positive. Uh, what is this related to? Now check this out. Let's look at the difference of cubes. What's the sign right here? Okay, do you see the first sign is the same? And then the opposite? And notice how the two of them are always positive for both? Okay, let's check, let's check the soap for the second formula. What do we have here? Positive. Isn't it same? Opposites? Always positive, all right? So let's see. How are we going to factor differences and sums of cubes? Well, in the same way we did it with the differences of squares, like we did row, we did right. Uh, what quantity equals what quantity squares is the first term? What one minus what quantity squared equals the second term? But this time 
We're looking for perfect cubes, not perfect squares. So let's go about it. All right, what quantity cubed equals to uh, x cubed? X, all right? So that's, um, yes, that's x. And what quantity cubed equals to 8? 2. Two. Two. All right, we, we, we got the hardest part of the problem already. The rest is just using the formula. All right, so that's going to be, so this is the A. This is the B. Well, let me use a different color. Okay, so this is the A. And this is the B. That is going to be, okay, A and B, that is X and 2. Let's skip the signs for a second. Now, we need the quantity A squared, which is X squared, the product AB, that is X times 2, which is 2X, and the square of B, that is the 2 quantity squared. All right? And how about we just put the signs in accordance with the so same, opposite, and the last one is always positive. So, plus minus and then plus and I'm, I would like to simplify this 2 squared equals to x plus 2 x squared minus 2x plus 4 and we got our first sum of cubes all right All right, let's look at letter B. P cubed minus 27 Q cubed, all right? All right, number one, the number one thing you want to do is determine whether it's possible to write these two quantities as a quantity cubed minus another quantity cubed. That is, okay, quantity cubed minus quantity cubed. Okay, what quantity cubed would give us the P cubed? Just a P, right? What quantity cubed would give us 27 Q cubed? 3 Q, all right? And we got it. We got our A and B. And let's just use the formula. But this time, we're going to use the difference of them, right? The difference of cubes. Well, number one, let's, ju let's just write... Write them in the format A, B, number one, that's uh, P, 3Q, and then P squared, the product of the two, uh, 3PQ, and then, careful with the last one, 3Q, quantity squared, and close parentheses. Now, uh, well, technically, I should use brackets here to, uh, to avoid abuse of using the parentheses. Okay. Again, let's go with the so minus, it's the same, negative, opposite, and then last time it's always positive. So, same, opposite, and always positive. However, we still need to simplify this 3Q squared. And again, keep in mind that this square affects both the 3 and the Q. So the three, uh, the, the the square affects the three and the q. That's going to leave us well, p minus three q. Parentheses, um, p squared plus three pq plus nine. Oh, careful because here my nine sometimes look like. Excuse me, we should have used different letters. Anyway, well, to distinguish my 9 from a cube, I draw this bar on thick of the cube, all right? And that's final answer here. That's final answer. And, oh, okay, yes. One last one. One last one, let's... Let's uh, factor y cubed minus 64. All right, so number one, again, if it works for you. Write what quantity cubed equals y cubed and y, when what quantity cubed equals to 64. All right, let's, let's start with that. What quantity cubed equals to y cubed? 
Four. Four. Uh, no, just y cubed. The y, all right? And what quantity cube equals to 64? Yes, that's, uh, that's, that's the four, right? All right. Okay, so, and again, what we got over here is our A and our B from the formula. Um, and then, well, let's see. Let's see about it. So, how about y minus, or oh, no, no signs yet, y, 4, and then y squared, the product between the two, 4, y, and then 4 squared. So, because it's a minus, so it's same, opposite, which is plus and always positive for the last term. And 4 squared, that equals to 16, everything else remains the same y squared plus 4y plus 16. And that's our final answer here. All right. And this actually wraps up the 